So this is a Leontief kind of production function. Uh, the minimum of alpha k beta L. So there are two inputs, labor L, capital K. And then the output you're going to produce with this K and L is this function, the minimum of these two, alpha K beta L, uh, to the power uh, rho. Okay, rho is probably some number between 0 and 1. I didn't say anything. Like, for example, P, rho is 1 half, right? square root of min. Well, the problem here, as I said, the only confusion maybe here is that this function is not really differentiable, right? Uh, in a sense, because this min function is not continuous. Uh, I'm sorry, it is continuous, it is not differentiable. Um, well, but we can still work with this. How so? Uh, the, the first thing you should note is that, oh, I'm sorry, if you want to find optimal inputs or optimal cost function, the approach is always the same. What you're trying to do is to minimize your cost. All right, minimize cost subject to your technology. All right, that's always the same, regardless of how weird functional form you have. Well, what is the cost? Well, that's also very simple because there are only two inputs in this simple world, capital and labor. So therefore the cost is just how much it's going to cost you to hire L units of labor and K units of capital. So assuming that R is the price of capital, rent, W is the price of labor, wage. So the cost is K times R plus W times L. All of them are numbers, R, W, K, L. The thing is though, the fixed parameters are R and W, the choice variables are K and L. Meaning, when I minimize this cost, I minimize this function by choosing k and l. I'm not choosing r or w, because I do not determine the price of capital or labor. This is an assumption, remember, here we're, we're not doing a general equilibrium analysis, which we will do uh, uh, next weeks. Here, we take the input prices as given. R is given to us, W is given to us, so all I can choose as a firm is K and L. So I'm going to minimize this thing, which is kind of easy because this is a linear function, subject to my technology. Well, if I choose K units of capital and L units of labor, I'm going to produce Q units of output, which satisfies this equality. I can't produce 100 units of Q if my capital and labor and my production function is, is, is not giving me 100, all right, with this K and L. All right, well, because I want to choose cost, the optimal cost or the minimum cost, we usually define cost function as a function of quantity, not as a function of inputs. So eventually I need to get to, uh, this is my cost function, right? K times R plus W times L. But the thing is, the K and L are different than Q. So I need to transform K and L as functions of Q. Plug them back here and then come up with a function which is a function of Q, not R or K. So that, I need to solve this optimization problem, I mean a minimization problem. Well, here, because, I mean, you can write down the Lagrangian and this and that, uh, fine, but don't do it for this question, right? Because again, as I, as I said, it's not differentiable. So what the heck is going to happen? Well, you have to inspect the production function a little bit closer maybe. Because you're trying to minimize cost, your objective is to choose capital and labor as small as possible, right? You don't want to spend uh, on capital or labor, which you're not going to use. So here, when you, when you have a Leontief form of function, min of two things, it says, look, I'm going to look at these two components, which I separated by a comma, and I'm going to take the minimum of those two. So if they're not equal, 
the extra is going to be wasted. This is always the case in Leon TF forms. Same for utility function, same for production function. All right? So therefore, if you are choosing something optimally to minimize something or maximize something, you shouldn't waste anything, which means you should always choose capital and labor so that your alpha k, the first term, is equal to your second term. All right? So optimality implies, therefore, alpha k equals beta l. Always. So you know what? I don't really need to solve this optimization problem. Because we solve optimization problem just to get a relationship between capital and labor. And I already got it. I don't need to solve a Lagrangian. Remember the utility maximization, marginal rate of substitution equals price ratio. The only reason I'm doing this in order to get a relationship between x1 and x2, I mean good one and good two. Same here. All I want to get is the relationship between capital and labor. All right? So I can get rid of this optimization problem. Uh, that's what I need, and so I need to work on this one. But am I done? One, well, no. Remember, my objective is to relate both capital and labor to quantity. How am I going to do this? Well, use the constraint, which I haven't used yet. So my constraint is Q equals uh, this ugly thing, F of KL. And I just learned that alpha K has to be equal to beta L. Well, what does that mean? That means, therefore, what is my F of KL? Well, f of kl is equal to alpha k to the power rho or uh, beta l to the power rho because both are equal. So that's it. This is what q is. This step is critical. I mean, the rest is just algebra. Uh, this is the line you should be clear about. But is this clear? OK. Well, then, uh, you know, just divide, uh, not divide, take the power of 1 over rho on both sides. So that means, let me continue here, alpha k is equal to q to the power 1 over rho, and, and beta l is equal to q to the power 1 over rho. So therefore, k is equal to q 1 over rho divided by alpha and L is equal to Q to the power 1 over rho divided by beta. That's it. These are optimal capital and labor levels. Let's put star there. I mean, you can start putting star all the way here uh, if you want to. I don't mind. But I just want to say we have stars here because they are the optimal capital and labor inputs. Well, then what is my cost function? Remember, my cost is simple. Uh, the cost of inputs. K times R, <clears throat> sorry. So my C of Q is uh, capital, which is this guy, Q to the power 1 over rho divided by alpha times R plus uh, labor, which is Q to the power 1 over rho divided by beta times wage. That's it. I mean, you don't really need to uh, try to simplify this. I mean, if you like, you can. You can just take this. Q to the power 1 over rho parentheses, and so it's R over alpha plus W over beta, if you like to. Fine. OK. Um, that's it. So this is my cost function. Well, then the rest of the question is like, oh, given the input prices uh, and the output price, uh, output price Q. This is a wrong notation. Output price is usually de denoted by P. Uh, what are the optimal input levels, which I found here? And what, are the, uh, what is the optimal cost function, which I just found here? What's the production level? I don't know what that means. Uh, oh, I think it's asking Q, uh, the optimal Q. Okay. Uh, so not, nothing fancy. Well, simple. 
uh, remember in this we assume uh, price taken at price taking firms all right and so if you are I mean you can go either way you can just write the profit function all right what is the profit fun well there are a bunch of different ways of writing it and depending on how you solve the question uh, you know you can use either one of them but they all are identical uh, you can start with uh, with the, the, with the basics, like I'm going to produce Q units of output, I'm going to sell Q units of output, right? So price is P times Q minus cost, C of Q. This is usually what the profit is. So here, what am I, what am I supposed to write as Q? Well, Q is this guy, right? Uh, this is the quantity. Uh, but the thing is, uh, if you like, you can go with P times uh, minimum of alpha K beta L to the power one over rho minus then C of Q KR minus WL. Well, why did I do this? Because here I left everything as a function of K capital and labor. So I should also leave them as capital and labor here. And so when I want to maximize my profit, I maximize by choosing capital and labor. So you can solve this maximization problem if you want to. Or alternatively, you can just write it as, look, uh, P times Q is how much quantity I'm going to produce minus the cost, which I just found here is this guy. Q to the power 1 over rho uh, and some R whatever alpha plus W beta. And so when I want to maximize profit, uh, obviously you want to call this profit upper bar because there are different functions, right? Uh, you can just choose how much quantity to produce. You either solve this optimization or this optimization, doesn't matter. At the end, you should get exactly the same numbers or same profit level. If you're not getting it, uh, you're doing something wrong. Well, alternatively, probably the simplest is if you are price taker and maximizing profit, your marginal cost of producing Q units of output must be equal to the market price. Okay? Once again, if you are a price taker, all right, and maximizing profit, this has to hold, okay? So therefore, if I want to find optimal Q, just go with this one. P is a number which is known to the firm, and marginal cost of Q is just the derivative of this guy. Set them equal, solve for Q, that's it. And then optimal profit. I mean, just plug all the numbers in here or here, doesn't matter. You're going to get the optimal profit. That's it. 